So tonight I want to show you some of the things that I've been doing with Big Blue. Uh, I had the opportunity to mass produce some royal icing transfers. And anybody that knows me, I don't like to mix a lot of colors with my royal icing. You can call me lazy. I don't like transfers. Just, just go ahead and decorate the darn cookie, right? I don't have time to do those little bitty things. Well, with Big Blue, I don't have to mix colors. I mix my royal icing and whatever I have left over in the bowl, I use that to make royal icing transfers with Big Blue. And it's a quick, painless way to make some of the cutest decorations for your cookies, your cakes, whatever the case may be. I've made them up to four inches in, to, in height and I've made them as small as a half of an inch. And again, you can see the detail on every single thing that we print. And it's just loads of fun being able to personalize different things on cookies for customers. You can put their children's picture on those royal icing transfers. You can put a, a picture of their dog on there. It doesn't matter. If you can find a clip art of it or a, a JPEG file, you can print it with Big Blue. Okay, so I'm going to turn the camera now and I'm going to show you some of the things that I've been working on and it, you'll be able to tell how much fun this printer can be using Royal Icing Transfers. Okay, so let me know if I'm in view of everything. Deb? Okay, so what I see is the bottom of your mount and going down ah! to wait, the... Wait, wait. Okay. How's that? <laughs> what? You change something? <laughs> no, I was sticking my tongue out at you since you said you could see my mouth. No, the mount, your mount. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you said mouth. All right, so <laughs> are you planning to, so right now um, we're seeing you going horizontal across, no, you're going up and down. Okay, so that. let me you're try going, going yeah. this way. Go. Yeah, now we want to, you're going to kind of take the. the There's kind of a delay, so hang on, hang on with me just a second. Okay. okay. Yeah. So, what you, uh, is not to be helping you? Uh, well, yes, but okay. Barbie's not here. She's my videographer. Gotcha. So, right now, what we see more of is the bottom of your mount and the top of your <laughs> snow cut mount. So, um, if you can kind of make the camera so you're going to take the, the part that's far away from you and press it down, and the part that's closest to you, bring it up a little bit on your camera. Your phone. Hang on, there's a delay. Okay. Delay, delay, delay. We are, delay, we're delay. moving, but there's a delay. Yeah. You're gonna have to do that more. Okay. More, more. Well, you keep more. telling me more, but I'm watching the screen and you're gonna have to wait just a few seconds. Okay. Is that better? A um, little bit more because, or, or <laughs> scoot, your, scoot your silk hat mat up. There we go. Okay. We're, now, as long as you don't, right where your hand is, that was your bottom. That's fine. That's okay, fine. Okay. So I'm going to turn these because I want you to see something. All right. So most of you have seen me on the live tutorials using smart sheets and my embossing technique. Right. And so that is what both of these cookies, the base of them are. So it's the embossing on the smart sheet. Okay. And then I used royal icing transfers in order to add some additional dimension and color to these cookies. Okay. So on this one that has the net, all of these pieces are royal icing transfers. Okay. Do you realize you're not upside down? So you can no. turn the cookie facing you. Oh my gosh. <laughs> not a bee's, bee's got me upside down over here. How's that? I think it's good. I guess I should look at Facebook because I'm not. You should. Or maybe I'm telling you wrong. Oh my gosh. You probably are. I don't know because my, you know, I'm at home. So my internet's not the best. But they'll tell us. Don't worry. They'll tell us. Anyway, all of the little embellishments on this cookie are royal icing transfers that were done using Big Blue. Okay. This cookie, which is 
a smart sheet and embossing beautiful texture but i wanted to one up it and add color and an additional dimension so i printed off different clip art of seashells and starfish okay and the way that i achieved that i actually printed these i piped them and printed them directly on an acetate sheet on the print bed of big blue so there's no steps in between i just pipe on the as onto the acetate sheet using a thicker like a 15 to 18 second royal icing and then i can either leave that on the print bed and let it dry overnight or i can remove that acetate sheet and set it off to the side and let them dry and 24 hours later you've got a bunch of cute little royalizing transfers that you can put on a multitude of different things and you can make these way in advance and they will store beautifully for an extended amount of time as long as you keep them in an airtight container and keep them protected the colors don't fade and they stay fresh okay um, now, one of the things that I wanted to talk to you about tonight is not only using royal icing to make transfers, I thought, what else can we use? And I watched Heather Salmon a couple of weeks ago, and she utilized uh, the premium icing sheet to pipe a beautiful mermaid. And I thought, can I use those for transfers on a cookie? And so I first started using the... Um, premium icing sheet in the piping bag with an acetate sheet. And so I put that on there. Okay. And I found out that the premium icing sheet would not dry on the acetate sheet. Whenever I tried to peel it off the next day, it actually broke into a lot of different pieces. It just never would turn loose. And I'm gonna show you. On this here, you can see that the colors printed beautifully. Right? Oh, yeah. But on this Santa here, the larger one, when I try to take him off of the acetate sheet, he comes apart. And so that's never gonna work using that okay so i thought well what else can i use if i really want to get that brilliant print that honestly i can't get with royal icing the white in the premium icing sheet is so brilliant it just it has such a great print quality so i tried it on wax paper again not the best results still had the crumbling effect that I had on this one here. Okay. Um, so then I thought, well, let me see what else I can use. I tried parchment sheets and they will work on parchment sheet. However, if you've ever made royalizing transfers on parchment, you notice that you have ridges that develop because the water from your, your transfers is seeping into that parchment sheet. So you're going to get wrinkles in your design. Okay. Well, then I thought that's not really going to work either because I don't want my transfers all wiggly. So I had this cute little Silpat mat from Simi Cakes. And I thought, let me try some of that on there. I, I put it on. I can still see the template on Big Blue's print bed through the Silpat mat. I put the wet premium icing down onto the mat in the design of that I had printed out and then remove that and let it sit for 24 hours. And as you can tell, they pop right off. Okay, so that is another option to print with. You can also get the larger Silpat mat at Icing Images, and you can still see through there, but it's a little more difficult with these Silpat mats to see those templates and your design, because some of your designs are very, very small, and 
it can be done, but it's just going to be a little more time consuming. So if you're wanting to do a lot of transfers in a short amount of time, then I would just, I would stick with the uh, royal icing and the acetate sheets. I can print about 140 transfers on one print bed. I like to give my mine a little bit of space in between so that my hand doesn't run through any of them. Okay. But depending on how you set up your template, you can easily manage 140 one inch transfers on one print bed. It takes me approximately 11 and a half to 12 minutes to print those 140 transfers. Okay. So I can be doing other things while I'm printing off transfers. I got Debbie's cough. <laughs> All right. So here's another one of my little transfers that I did. And for you guys that know me, you know, I love pirates. So we have a pirate Becky, theme going on. Becky, okay. move it forward away from you. A little more. Oh, no, no. Move, it, <laughs> move it forward. No, forward, not up. Forward. Towards the mount. Towards the mount. It, I am going towards the mount. Go more towards the mount. Just a little bit more. And you can turn it up so, right side up now. <laughs> How's that? Yeah, but it's upside down. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> you know I'm directionally challenged, right? Yeah. Um, I need to answer a question real quick. Um, okay. So Catherine, um, she didn't cut the premium icing sheet into shapes. Two weeks ago, Heather Salmon went up, came on and she did a premium icing sheet, um, like a royal icing, but but she made it out of premium icing sheets. Yeah, um, let me show you. I yeah. I took the premium icing sheet and I tore it up into little bitty tiny pieces, right? And I put it in a Ziploc baggie and I added water to it. So I get a royal icing consistency that I can pipe with, okay? And you can throw this in the freezer and, and keep it. It's going to stay good. But again, I want it thick enough to where it will hold its shape on the transfer design, but not too thick to where it, it doesn't smooth out, if that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. So uh, we did have one, one viewer take it, and she chopped up the icing sheet using a coffee, um, a coffee yeah. grinder yeah. and it made it really fine and easy to do. Now, I, I want to make sure that something's clear too. You can print on icing sheets, but what, she's showing, yeah, what she's showing you here today is how to make uh, like a royal icing type icing out of the icing sheets. She's going to show you a couple different things. This is just where she is right now. She don't know where but, she is. That's that's besides the point. That's why not <laughs> here. I'm here. Lori's here. We're all here making sure she knows. I know, right? Yeah. Hey, Don. Okay. All right. So um, another thing that I tried was uh, the flex frost sheets. Okay. And I thought, well, let me try those as far as a royal icing transfer because you can melt them and make lace, right? Well, when I did that, I also put it on the acetate sheet and it pulled away from it and the actual design itself was great if you wanted that thing at a 90 degree angle so it didn't stay flat it didn't have the smooth surface on the back so the the flex frost sheets was a no-go for making transfers for me now someone else may have a little bit more luck with them than i did but um it was just a little too much work for what i was getting Okay, so again, I went back to the royal icing and just, there is, the thing that I love about Big Blue and making designs is you can make a multitude of different sizes all on the same print bed. And you can tell by this little Santa Claus that I did here. I started very, very small and then went at different increments and all this was printed at the same time okay so depending on your need you can adjust on the size i can put anything in combination on that print bed as well i printed santa claus i printed pirate ships i printed a parrot 
I printed seashells all on the same print bed at the same time. So I'm not uh, restricted to one design at a time. And that's the beauty of the design program that Blue uses is that you have options that you can actually put in there and make them your own. I get bored very easily. Mary not a bee can attest to that. So I like variations while I'm doing these things because if I'm piping 140 transfers, I get tired of piping the same thing over and over and over. Call me ADD or ADHD, go right ahead. But I like the variations of being able to do different patterns as I'm going along. Um, what did you do to this... Santa's head? Do what? You did something to big Santa's head. Well, Santa's head is was an experiment. He didn't work. He was a premium icing sheet that doesn't work on acetate. He crumbles. I can't take him off and use him. Gotcha. I was like, where does head go? And then I saw yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. So like, that Why? didn't work for me. Okay. Yeah. Now, now, one thing I like about the, these lives is that, um, and you see this over and over with many different decorators who come on, they try all these different ways to do things and tell you what not to do and what to do, which is nice because you don't have to do it. Um, also, I have a question for you, my dear. Okay. Okay. Um, so when you design these images, uh -huh. um, do you have to use a specific program? No, you can use a multitude of different programs, whatever you are already comfortable with. Even the old Microsoft program paint, you can use it to, to design your templates. Okay, so what you want to look for is a high quality, uh, like a 300 DPI JPEG. And you can download free clip art and then convert it to a JPEG file very easily in a numerous free programs. Okay. Now, I, and so I know it, oh, sorry. a lot of decorators that own the blue um, or one of the blues, they use Canva too. So I know a lot of people use that out there, which is nice. You just correct. And I actually have the paid Canva subscription. Mm -hmm. And so anything that I find on there, I can actually put on my cookies and sell those cookies because I now have the rights to those prints because I've paid Canva for the use of them. Um, the only designs that I pull off of like Google to use is free clip art because I don't want to infringe on anybody's copyright unless I have gotten written permission from that artist to use it. And I know using Canva that I already have that permission built into my subscription. So Becky, you, are you going to show how to actually do the transfers as far as like the piping and the, that stuff? I am. Okay. Fact, then Marlene, you have to wait. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were. Well, who, are you tell, who are you telling to wait? Marlene, she's asking a question out of order. No, Marlene, that's a great question. Believe me, I asked, I asked it to you the first time. Okay, so, so I'm going to get one of my templates that Blue has printed off for me. And the way that I do that is I print off two templates. If I'm Because I'm kind of lazy, I like to sit down and pipe as well. So I leave one on the print bed itself, and I print off a, a duplicate in order to put into my workspace so that I can then take my royal icing and pipe directly onto my acetate sheet. Okay. So let me grab my acetate sheet and my template. Now I know a lot of um, blue owners, they pipe right directly on the bed. Becky's doing it another way because as she said, she's yeah. Like, yeah. If, if I've out. only got a few of them to do, then I'll stand over there at the print bed and I'll pipe it on. Okay. The main thing is I want to make sure that I get tape and secure my acetate because I don't want this acetate sheet wiggling around while I'm piping that royal icing. Otherwise, I'll never be able to line up my royal icing piped 
transfers onto my print bed that has the original print on it. Okay, does that make sense? And I use acetate sheets that I got from Amazon. And these are actually, um, I think these are 10 by 10 size, which is smaller than the, the print bed. Okay. All right. So while blue is over there printing away on something else, then I just pipe my transfer onto the acetate sheet. And the key is when you're piping them, you want all of your little transfers to be the same thickness. Because when you print on Big Blue, you don't want those variations on the print bed. You want a crisp print so each one of them is the same thickness. And you can make these as thin or as thick as you want and you adjust your print bed accordingly to what all of them are. And again, so it's, oh, sorry. it's very easy to adjust the height setting so that no, you get not, a good print. <laughs> sorry, I keep, I keep interrupting when you're, when you're, I can't tell when you're gonna talk. So now, and this, this answered one of my questions when I was watching you do it. I'm like, how do you get the shape exactly to the, you know, well, shape. you just, you use your little, your little uh, design that you've printed out yes. and stay within that design. And then when it prints onto your royal icing, it's going to be the exact same print. Right. I always thought that was great. And I also noticed, because of course I look at everything, um, it, that, uh, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect. Correct. Um, royal icing transfers, when you look at them, they're not perfect. Like, there's always a little bit of weight around them. Like, it, it, yeah. yeah. But, you, like, you know, if you're, if you're really OCD, you can take your time and really stay within that coloring line, if you will. And yeah. you won't have any of those white areas. Gotcha. Okay. Now, um, we do have a question. And, and okay. if, uh, boutique, if you're having this question, you know, I think other people are, too. Okay. All right, so she, Becky showed two, actually three different ways of creating a transfer. So there's the traditional royal icing transfer. That's what she's doing right now. And that's how you know. You, you know what that is, a royal icing transfer. But she also went outside the box and she took the premium icing sheets and she crushed them up and uh, put some water in them and basically made an icing sheet transfer material. And it looks um, exactly so like I, this in the bag. It's just brighter white. It still yeah. pipes on the same. The only thing, again, that I found is it won't turn loose of the acetate sheet. Right. So I had and to so get that. a different medium to pipe it onto in order for that to be successful. And this guy here was act, is actually a premium icing sheet. Yeah, and so Heather Salmon, she did this two weeks ago, not printing on it, but she was creating these, these, um, these like she 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 decorated them is what she did. Um, but the advantage to using the icing sheet because people are like, well, why would I do that? Um, that was my first question. And the icing sheet transfer material is brighter white, so you're going to get more vivid. Um, the blue's pretty vivid as printing as it can, as right now. But um, also, it stays like, it's not totally flexible, like you can fold it in half, but it's bendable. Correct. A I, and I, don't know if you, I don't know if you can see that, but I can yeah. actually manipulate it some. Yeah. Whereas the royal it. icing transfer, and I'm, gonna, I'm just going to sacrifice one of them and show you. This is a royal icing transfer. Okay. And you saw me... You saw me bend the parrot, who was the premium icing sheet. He had some give to him, right? Well, if I try to bend the royal icing transfer, it breaks. Yeah. And so that's okay. the difference. That's the advantage of going with the premium icing sheets. Um, now, have you tried printing directly on the acetate and then piping over it? I have, and it's kind of like here. Yeah. It was kind of messy. <laughs> okay. So it's 
So I didn't like that. And it picks up that color on the back of your royal icing transfer. Oh. And so when you're looking at them and you don't want your customers to see that the messiness. Right. Or I don't. So I didn't yeah. I didn't like that. But you can tell I did print on it <laughs> an acetate sheet just to see what it would do. Gotcha. There you go. There's your answer. All right. I'll be quiet now. No, you won't. No, you won't. <laughs> okay. So again, you would just go through and depending on how many you have on your template, just pipe them on there. And I use a 10 ml acetate sheet. So they're pretty thick. So whenever I finish piping them all on, I can transfer this whole thing over to the bed and line it up with my pattern, which is very easy to do because I've followed the same outline. Right. Right. And then I secure it to the print bed and then print away and it prints exactly where I've piped. Yep. So, okay. yeah, some people print on the, do it right on the print bed. Some people don't. That's, you know, that's what's so great is that there's so many ways to do things. <clears throat> now, I do yeah, want to say. Yeah, if I'm when, only doing half of a sheet, uh -huh. then I'll stand over there at the print bed and pipe them all on. Yeah. But I don't want to do this 140 of them standing up over there. Some people, it, they don't have a problem with that. But I, I just, I don't like doing it. But uh, with the print bed. You can raise it up, you can lower it, you can uh, make it go in, you can make it come out. So it's convenient to whatever you want to do. Right. Now, some of you may be looking at this saying, hmm, I see that I could put little snowmen in between. Like if you see the four that are making a square up, you, I you can. In there. I like to leave space in between all of mine because I am inevitably getting my finger in one of them yeah so i just i like to keep mine spread apart but i could get a whole lot more on here if i were doing a bunch of these for a particular event or whatever and quite frankly when i'm looking at this if you have one printing you could take that other template that you made and start up another sheet so correct you have to put them all together because there's plenty of time in between correct so. like a, a if I were to do this entire print here on uh -huh. my machine, and it's going to depend on your settings, it's about uh -huh. 11 and a half to 12 minutes to print all of these, these snowmen. In that yeah. 11 and a half or 12 minutes, I can pipe an additional acetate sheet full and then just switch them out whenever it's finished. Now, I know um, you have your settings up at a slower place. It's just where you like them to be. Um, if you put them on the standard settings, which a lot, most of the decorators use, it's actually like seven to eight minutes, yeah. but it's still plenty of time. Now, Glamour Cookies has another question. Um, okay. so, so she said, how do you ensure that your template is in the exactly same spot as it was before? Yeah, you know, when you move it from the bed and you come back, obviously it's going to shift, but she actually printed two templates, left one on the bed and took the do. other one. And then that way, when she took that took the acetate sheet back, she just lined it right up. And you know, it's really interesting after you've used Big Blue several times, you get so in tune with where you're putting your paper alignment that you're going to put it back almost exact every single time. Right. You just square it up with the edge and the corners and it's, it's actually not difficult at all. Right. Now, um, now I'm going to let you answer this one, but this is a great, great question. Can you print um, wet royal? Yes, you can. Uh, in fact, all of the transfers that you've seen tonight were all printed on wet royal icing. And the reason that I do that is because, again, it's a time saver. I don't want to have to wait 24 hours to print. I could, but I don't want to because then that's slowing down my process. But you're going to see that the the uh, inks don't bleed through. It's very vibrant. And again, these were all printed on wet. That looks so, like it's textured, but it's not, is it? No, no. That's the different colors that the printer will allow you to print, giving you that dimension onto your prints. Gotcha. Good. 
I think we caught up with all the questions. Okay. Yep. Now, on this guy here, I could have added a multitude of different things, but I just wanted that extra pop of color and I wasn't sure what size I wanted. So there again, Big Blue allowed me the opportunity to print my parrot in about six different sizes that I selected. And then I chose the one that fit the best in my little bird's nest here. That's so cute. I love that parrot. And um, Jalen Webb wants to borrow that. that, <laughs> that, that and that, how, cute, how cute would this be to use this cookie? And you have a, let's say you have a little boy's birthday party that you're doing. And you print a royal icing transfer of that child. Because you had a picture from the mom. And you, you got your JPEG and printed that transfer of that little boy standing there. Or a little girl, whatever. But yeah. you could personalize these cookies in so many ways that you couldn't do before. That's awesome. Yeah, another thing that I had the opportunity to do, I got um, some new fondant from the Sweet Chalet. Ooh. And I don't, I don't like fondant. It, to me, it stinks. It tastes horrible. And I tell my customers to pull it off. It's great to work with, you know, you can, you can make great molds with it. Um, but I never would encourage them to eat it. Well, I got this stuff in yesterday and it's called the Velvet Smart Flex. Okay. It's new. We were and it's a about new it. fondant. Yeah. And I opened the package and I didn't have that offensive odor hit me in the face that some of the fondant will do. I pulled it out, started playing with it. And of course, if you know me, I didn't read the package first. And I'm thinking, ooh, this stuff is great. This stuff is really soft. This stuff is kind of velvety. And then I look at the package and I'm thinking, oh, hello. Why don't you read, Becky? The name of it's Velvet Smart Flex, right? So yeah. I started using it. Um, I could roll it really, really thin. And it still held its shape. I used it in some of my fondant molds that I would use on cookies. And it, the detail is very, very nice. How's it taste? In everything that I tried. Right? And then I thought, well, let me take a piece and I'm going to throw it on big blue. And I'm going to print it. And so the colors of the print on this fondant are absolutely phenomenal. So, it looks like a 3D piece. If you were sitting here with me, you can see the shadowing effect. Oh, wow. And so I was, I was really impressed with the way that that fondant took so, the ink. So that's flat? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And I could have gotten it a lot thinner and still printed on it and had the same results. But I have to tell on myself because, again, I don't like fondant. I don't like anything about it. And I don't give anything to my customers that I wouldn't have tried before. So I took a piece off, popped it in my mouth, and then I caught myself eating a lot of the fondant and I had to stop because it tasted good. Yeah. And then I had a private class today with a young teenager and I had her play with it a little bit and I told her to taste it after she had tasted a competitor fondant. She spit that fondant out and she tried the, the new one and she said, wow, this kind of tastes like Airheads candy, the mystery taste. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? She's exactly right. It was very enjoyable. It's easy to work with. I love it on the printer. 
I didn't find one single mold that I didn't love the results of. So I will be ordering this stuff and using it a lot. So thank you, Sweet Chalet, for sending me some samples of it. So um, would you put this on a cookie? I guess you just did. I just did. And <laughs> you, you see this piece right here? Yeah. I'm going to eat it. <laughs> oh, my gosh. It's good. <laughs> yeah, I put the link. But up yes, there. I would definitely use this on a cookie. And I wouldn't have any qualms about a customer eating it. Yeah, and that's in the cookie industry, like most people don't like fondant because of the taste. Correct. Um, because it's so thick, but you roll that so thin and it tastes good. Um, so that's just not what you see in fondants, but now you do thanks to Sweet Chalet. Yeah, and another thing that I, I noticed, I, because I used a competitor fondant right beside this new fondant last night when I was playing mm -hmm. with them. Mm -hmm. And so this is the competitor one. Okay. This one. And again, I don't use fondant enough to really know all of the, the terminology that goes along with it. But this one is really rough and ugly looking as far as the texture is concerned. Mm -hmm. And this one, which was rolled out at exactly the same time, is still very smooth. It's velvety. I could still manipulate it some. This one, I can't. Oh, wow. And they've been setting out the same amount of time. Wow. Wow. So that's, so, that's a big difference. Marissa, can you flavor this, This the, the Smart Flex? And um, Sydney Galpern from Sydney Cakes is on as well. She's teaching four classes at Cookie Can, Cookie Can, Cookie Con <laughs> Orlando with Smart Flex icing uh, images, icing sheets, and semi isomol. Um, Yay! And Stacy did answer. You can flavor it. She he has tried it with oil based extracts, and it works great. Okay, so now let me let me throw another one out there for you, Stacy. You can also flavor it with the perfect palette powdered Ooh. flavors because I did add some flavoring to it, even though it's vanilla, because I wanted to see if I could get complimentary flavors for my cookies. And I used the lemon flavoring and it picked it up very, very nicely. All right. That's awesome. So now Marissa said, yes, you can flavor the basic vanilla which is, I guess, what you have. Yes. But it's, this also comes in an almond and lemon flavor. Um, you guys are making Marissa's day. It's, there's nothing better than when you bring a product to market that people absolutely love and they can take it to places they were not able to before. It's, yeah. As a vendor, it's the most satisfying thing ever. Just like the blue for me, it's so satisfying. Um, you know, because you work to find those products that make a difference for for your you all the artists. That's well, and I, I, you would, you know me, and I'm I'm the first one to tell you whether or not I like a product. Oh yeah. And if I didn't like the flavor of this, and I didn't like the way that it felt working with it, I would tell you that tonight. I don't, yeah. I don't use this fondant on my cookies. I wouldn't want to, that to be associated with my cookies. Yeah, I would use this new product. Yes, that's smart flex. 